Hey what's up folks, welcome to part 5 of the Deep House tutorials. Over this episode I will be showing you a track which you can see on the screen now which is almost finished, I just need to add a few more sounds to it to make it sound more exciting but the overall arrangement and sounds I've got at the moment I feel happy with so I'm going to use this as, as an example of what our track should end up looking like and then uh, we'll carry on from there on the track we're actually making based on these tutorials. So I'm just going to play you this track now all the way through and then we'll carry on with the track that I'm making to do with the tutorials.
Right, folks, there we have it. As I say, it's not a finished track yet. I still need to work on the outro. I need to work on this part a bit more to make it easier to mix another track with, um, as well as adding a few more sounds into it. But overall, I feel quite happy with it. Right, let's get back to the actual track. Right, this is what we've done so far, as you can see. I'll just wait for this to load. Yeah, right, this is what we've done so far, as you can see. Just turn my keyboard on actually quickly as well. Right, so uh, let's start working on a few more sounds. Just going to quickly play through some of the track just to get a sort of idea of what we've done so far because it's been a while since I've played this so let's have a listen quickly.
which as you can hear uh, from the last time I played it to you I've added some more stuff since then I thought I'd play it all the way through just to give you uh, an idea of the new sounds that I've put in there because if I'm being honest I forgot that I put them in there so I thought I'd play it all the way through so uh, anyway let's carry on for time's sake purposes of this tutorial let's uh, just get straight on with what we're supposed to be doing right I want to work on the intro a bit more like I said in the last tutorial or one of the last tutorials and uh, see what kind of uh, things we can do to it because as I said if the intro doesn't sound appealing to a listener then they're probably going to get put off listening to the rest of the track so the intro is really or the beginning part of the track is really the uh, crucial part of it which really needs to appeal to the person so let's search for some more pads in the future tutorials, I know I said it in one of the last ones, but I do want to start sort of going in depth into the more complicated things like uh, bussing, stuff like that. I apologise my voice doesn't sound good either, I've just got over the worst of the cold, so bear with me. Uh, let's have a look what sort of sounds we can get. That could be good, isn't it? Effect, a little pad effect. The resonance down. Something like that, just because something like that in there. Something like that, I'm thinking, just as a little pad effect. Yeah, that might work. Let's try that. Somewhere there. Uh, on 
to take off quite a bit of the low end. So, filter it as well so uh, be uh, pitched up more in tone so let's have a listen let's have a listen with the rest of the intro I don't want it to be too present so two together work quite well. Uh, let's take off the uh, automation. I can never say it. Uh, let's listen. Doing a filter down on the last note would sound quite good. Uh, let's go back into the filters. Have a listen now. some of the track and the pads that I've uh, added here which slowly fade in 
I want to add a few more things around that to make them sort of fit in well with the mix. Because with everything I've got at the moment, it all sounds good, but some of it's not in key, and I just want to sort of sort it out a little bit. we've added another sound which I feel happy with so I'm going to put that underneath that because that's uh, layering underneath that one so I'll keep that I'll also save it uh, so that's something else what's that I don't remember putting that in there so this is It's not that noticeable, it's just there, so that could work. Let's also call that by its name. Right. Let's have a look at some samples because I want to look at start adding a few atmospheric vocal type sounds. Uh, Oh yeah, that's something that I made. Let's have a look. Uh, it's a little mini programmed bongo uh, drum that I made. 
see if that works well in this mix. It could do actually. Uh, let's turn it down for starters. It's a bit loud. Let's move it in somewhere like the drums when they come in. Yes. I must have uh, recorded it in a different tempo. Uh, see if I can find out what tempo I made it at. Twenty-eight. Uh, I'll scrap that. I think. Uh, see what else we got. Loops. It's pissing me off. As soon as I buy samples, half the folders are empty. It fucking worries me right up. <sighs> See, that's empty as well. Why? Is this at oh, it's one twenty five as well? starters as well I do quite like this sample, but I'm thinking of taking out the subby percussional parts of it and just keeping that little click. Cut it a little bit.
doesn't go well with the other uh, bongo drum that comes in, so we'll keep only the clicky sounds. Uh, right, so let's loop that. Uh, pack that into a folder so it's more neater looking let's uh, copy and paste it along a few times so I've got it into the sort of rhythmic feel that I want it to go at yes, that one can go Not forgetting to uh, save as you go along, because as we all know, logic can be pretty buggy sometimes, so it's not worth losing what you've done. Uh, let me just sort this out quickly.
Right, save. I do want to keep those streamlines in the track because I want to sort of create a more intense type vibe in this part of the track so I want to keep them in there but the trouble is now um, I'm feeling as though it doesn't go well with everything else that I've put in there um, well let's just solo the strings and all the other pads and stuff
with me. Uh, Let's try it at four plus four. Starting to annoy me a little bit now. Uh, so Start it from where it fades in, and Sort out the optimization.
I'm going to come in later on, I think. Let's add a few more things. Got a nice percussional sample down. Let's try to think what else I can add. So we'll look through.
just uh, trying to see if this mixes in well. I want to kind of like fade it into the actual arrangement. Right, let's see if this works. Lot and see if it works better coming in after that. for now just to sort of keep things going let's see what else that we can do
weeks. some groove to the uh, kick drum but then that's more tribal type or techie which is not what we're going for so let's have a listen in uh, combination with the kick see what it sounds like let's turn it down actually let's uh, move it on to a part when the kick drum comes in more subby I quite like that actually you could add some groove to it because uh, it goes quite well with the, the click on the other sample Unless it's, the, unless it's just a click in that sample. play around with it and see if I can get it to work with the arrangement.
Well, we've got uh, something coming on which I'm liking. Let's see what else we can add. Some things. That might go well with the other ones here that we've made. Uh, gives it more of a structural uh, characteristic, then. Really.
them all together and then move them underneath each other. Right, let's uh, copy on there, so there's the optimization again. Right, we've laid three pad sounds now, and also, sorry that I've not been talking very much, uh, kind of been concentrating a little bit on doing this. Uh, right, we've laid three pad sounds, which I think sounds quite interesting. I've kind of made it now so it sounds as one pad, if you can see what I mean.
something which is uh, shaping to be a nice track, I think. Uh, I'm going to work on those strings a bit later on once this tutorial is done and then do another one later on. Uh, how many of the time? Uh, hour and 20 minutes. I'll carry on going uh, for about another 10 minutes, then I'll end the tutorial there and uh, get enough tutorial up soon. So, let's see what else we can do. As I say, I apologise for not really talking very much, folks. Uh, I was kind of concentrating on doing a few things, but I'm all trying to talk to you a bit more now. Right. Thinking of. Look in the sculpture, see what we can get. Right, so I want to make that more of a pad, so. So cut off some of the low frequencies. Even though you can't hear it on monitor speakers like mine and that, or maybe even headphones, there are low frequencies in pretty much every sound you can think of. So the only times you hear them is on a, a club environment on big speakers. So it really is important to do low cuts. And it does make your track sound a lot cleaner. do a few changes to it to make it sound a bit more exciting. It sounds very, uh, I don't know what the word is, plain, I think. I want to do a few more things to it.
Alright. Cool, let's see if that makes it interesting. I should know if phaser might make it sound interesting. I quite like phaser effects. Searching some of the settings, see what we got. <laughs> Notice, search for something else. Ring shifter, see what we can get out of that. No, that doesn't work well at all. Uh, let's go back into sculpture. How are we doing for time? Yeah, I'll do. I'll do five more minutes and I'll go. Uh, pad, ambient pad. Just open up some of the highs.
do something like that might work. Yeah, I quite like that. Right, I'm going to keep that as it is for now, and I'm going to end the tutorial here. I will be doing some more tutorials soon, as soon as I can get some time and that in my hands. And then uh, I'll be back again to work on more of this track. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I shall see you guys next time. Cheers, guys.